Hey all, welcome to another chat with a, uh, with a group of experts that have extensive experience in teaching online, planning for teaching online, pivoting online, and a range of other activities that support that. Uh, now, we've got an opportunity today to speak with, uh, with a colleague, uh, Calvin Bentley, who I've known for uh, probably since 2012 at the LAC conference. Uh, Calvin, welcome here. So can we start maybe a little bit of a background? Uh, what, what's your background been in this digital learning teaching space and uh, we, what are you seeing in the landscape today? Sure, so I, I got involved in online learning back in 2001. I was uh, an assistant professor of psychology at a school in Louisiana that was building a bachelor of science program that was fully online. And at the time it was the, the first uh, of its type of program in the state. Um, so it gave me, got, gave me a really good opportunity to learn soup to nuts, what's involved in terms of not only, you know, developing a course, but then also working with other faculty to build a program, and then working with uh, staff and administrators at the institution to actually, you know, make it a, a, a viable um, fully online program with the wraparound student services that go with it. And so, after that experience, um, I led online learning initiatives at two-year and four-year colleges and universities. Um, I've done some consulting as well for uh, schools in the States as well as in other countries. Um, so it's, it's, it's been an interesting ride because I didn't really think I was going to, you know, get into online learning back in 2001. I actually took a position to be a little bit closer to my girlfriend, who's now my wife. And so it's turned into a very interesting career since then. Yeah, and that's uh, one of the things that's been interesting is seeing the pace at which the technologies that are available for academics to use have developed. And uh, obviously now video and the simulation VR, there's a lot of sophisticated technologies that are available, but good quality learning design still really centers on the student, supporting the student, the student interaction with, with other uh, students, with curriculum with the teacher and so on. So from your experience, what is it that someone needs to be particularly aware of as they begin moving online? What kinds of things should they be thinking about, especially in the current environment where it's online by force, really, for, for many faculty? Right, well, um, I just, uh, we just moved from uh, Florida to Texas. And so um, when I think about that, recent experience, I think about it in terms of online learning as well. Um, I think <clears throat> when you're making a move, um, whether it's you know physically or in a digital space, I think you have to do a lot of packing and unpacking. And I think you know when you are uh, used to teaching face-to-face -face, uh, in either small classrooms or large lecture halls to shift that approach to digital learning really requires you to like re-examine everything that you've done um, and really, you know, take account of, you know, what the original learning outcomes were or are for your courses. How have you actually provided instruction or uh, remedial instruction to students? Uh, you know, what types of materials have you assigned? Um, because, you know, you might have to actually leverage the web more often um, when you're going to remote teaching to, you know, provide students more digital learning content, uh, OER, or open educational resources, maybe more so than you leveraged um, when the course was face-to-face -face because, you know, students had more direct access to you, right? You were, um, you know, teaching for 75 minutes, two days a week, or uh, for four hours a week, you know, depending on how many credit hours. And so I think it, it, it's really unpacking your course, seeing how you've taught, and find where the gaps are. So as you move to fully online, what will you do differently? What are the opportunities for you to do some things differently? Um, perhaps you're not going to necessarily lecture for 75 minutes because that overwhelms the attention span of your students. And so maybe it's all about you recording small snippets of material on very specific learning topics, right? That students can easily access, can easily regurgitate, rewind, review, um, and so, but of course that requires time and that is challenging right now because given the crisis that we're under, schools are forcing faculty to do this work, um, you know, in a, in a very short period of time. And so I think in some ways trying to take baby steps toward really, again, 
uh, modularizing, uh, you know, creating modules for students to easy act to easily access the course content will be key in the learning management system. And then really working with instructional designers, instructional technologists to find what what key tools are available to you to use um, to get you hopefully quickly up and running. Uh, great points, and I love the metaphor that you know the view that treat it like you're moving from physically one space to another because there's a lot. Uh, that's different about it. And something I've said numerous times in the course now is it's not that online is better or worse than in classroom, but is definitely different. And it has different markers of performance, different indicators of success and so on. Oh, your expertise has been as an administrator as well, which obviously we would think, you know, the best time to get started online was, I don't know, a decade ago. And, uh, but many people didn't have that luxury and many universities haven't done that either. But what role do you see administration playing in this current environment? How, considering the pace and the pressure and everything else that's going on, how would you advise them to approach the environment that we're in now, knowing that it may last for months and even stretching into the September semester? Yeah, that's a great question. I, I really think administrators really need to provide as many resources to uh, their faculty. So I think, again, faculty development was, um, and still is, I think, a, a kind of an interesting aspect of the, fa of the faculty experience, right? Some faculty leverage it, many others are like, you know, screw faculty development, I don't really need to do faculty development. And I think we need to provide more incentives so that faculty will actually engage in this. And of course, given that, you know, campuses are closing now, faculty are more forced to actually learn about uh, the different technologies and best practices uh, for online pedagogy and student learning, which is a good thing. Um, but I think it's also just trying to provide faculty with, uh, with resources, you know, incentivizing faculty, uh, maybe uh, faculty peers um, who can also assist with some of the heavy lifting showing, showing off uh, good practices in terms of what they've done in, in terms of online learning to help those faculty who are not as uh, experienced in that. Um, I think um, also it, this could be a great opportunity to leverage a partner. Um, and I, I don't wanna necessarily, you know, plug any one company or even my own at, at Six Red Marbles. But I mean, sometimes I think it requires administrators to also realize they can't do it all by themselves. And so bringing in a consultant, someone to kind of help, um, help evaluate um, their approach uh, to this type of transition could be very helpful, especially on the front end in terms of, you know, maybe, you know, helping an institution think about what the, the larger plan needs to be in terms of transitioning to remote teaching, but then also helping individual departments figure out what, what tools, what resources will they use, right? Because one large plan may not be um, specific enough to really meet the needs of uh, departments with than a college, right? And so there, there might need to be um, a, depart, a departmental need, a dean, department chairs working together, and maybe also leveraging a consultant to really figure out what are the, you know, what, what are the steps, what are the tools, and then how will we as a, as a school or a department evaluate the effectiveness of our um, response to doing this remote teaching, right? What data will be collected? And then how will that data be shared with the institution as, at large to help them improve their institutional plan? So I think those, those are the types of things administrators need to have more active dialogue around. Um, but, I, but again, with the faculty, providing as much help and resources to them as possible will be key because it all falls apart, right? If the faculty are not on board and, then, and if they're not well supported, um, it's going to make that lift, which is already heavy because it's quick and it's also requiring everyone to do this work all at the same time. So, you know, administrators have to find um, ways to make the lift as easy as, easy as, as possible, uh, which is challenging. Those are some great points, uh, particularly uh, regarding the uh, something we haven't heard as much is the sort of peer based or network based faculty development. 
that there are people on campuses that have done quite a bit of teaching online, even in, in the most non-online universities in the country and globally, but they've, they've experimented with different tools. They've uh, engaged in distributed social networks and the list goes on. So I think getting, you know, leveraging those capabilities and one of the, the aspects that you're referencing as well about working with an external partner, I think for many universities, once the current hump is, is, has passed by, which is really the next number of weeks, uh, or right. maybe a month and a half at, at most before the semester winds down. There needs to be a lot of focus development for uh, the fall term, meaning that there needs to be a lot of attention being paid to how do we get ready for fall and how do we move our material online in a more sustained and structured way. And I think that's where engaging certainly with external experts and partners for, for many universities may be one of their, their best strategies at that stage. Now, a uh, final question, I guess I'll just put your way. If you, if, you were, if you were to say to people who are completely new, and many of the individuals that are taking this course, many of the faculty that are starting to teach online are completely new to teaching in digital environments, what would be sort of a few quick points of advice that you would like them or encourage them to think about, both with your background as an administrator in moving to digital teaching, but also as, as a faculty member that's been in this environment as well? What would you advise new faculty to focus on? Yeah, I, I would advise new faculty to, uh, again, leverage uh, their uh, in-house instructional designers, instructional technologists. Uh, hopefully they've curated, um, they've provided lists of resources that the faculty can leverage. Um, and, and of course, they, they can take uh, various forums, books, um, OER content on online teaching, as well as OER content that they could pull into courses to help with that heavy lift of, of teaching. Um, I think instructional technologists especially will be very helpful in terms of, you know, showing best practices and how to use technologies like Zoom, uh, the learning management system, um, those shortcuts, right? And, you know, those, uh, uh, the, the shortcuts uh, will be very, very helpful to know um, and to have kind of on the side so that uh, instructors uh, won't have to do as much digging for the information. And so, um, looking at FAQs and those types of things that the institution already has made available through their Center for Teaching and Learning will be helpful. Um, given my background uh, in psychology, which again, th that degree was a long time ago, so um, you know, I'm, I'm not speaking as a licensed clinical psychologist today, but I think one thing you have to, uh, I think faculty also need to be made aware of is to be patient with themselves, right? So. Um, this is not going to be perfect, um, obviously, for, for, for so many different reasons. The, the time crunch and the, the level of expertise that many of faculty are coming in into this with. And so um, definitely, you know, take notes as you're going through this. Ask your students to be brutally honest. Um, and then with that, though, uh, take your teaching ego and put it aside this, this semester or for the next couple of semesters and really allow that feedback from your students to sink in in terms of both, you know, um, encourage uh, the students to provide constructive feedback about things you're doing uh, pretty well, as well as those things where it's maybe it's a technology issue or, or maybe the students feel like there's not enough um, meat on the bones in terms of digital learning content to help them understand those money points. And, and really write those things down, keep track of those. And hopefully, as you mentioned, right, as hopefully the situation kind of plateaus and starts to bottom out a little bit. Hopefully faculty, let's say even over the summer, will have some time to hopefully reflect and then use that information to, you know, improve their approach to uh, remote, uh, uh, remote teaching, which I really hope for because I think um, that that's my worry in all of this, that faculty are not encouraged or not incentivized to tweak their own model. Um, but I think that needs to happen such that if remote learning continues to be needed, um, you, know, you know, in future semesters or let's say two years from now, right, this information could still um, be helpful to, to uh, help them provide the best models to help not just uh, their students, but hopefully help them with that heavy lift. Well, that's terrific and great to end on, on that note because I do think there are some really practical points that you've raised there that people can both 
use and adopt immediately, but also begin to plan for longer term uh, development, uh, in, whether that is in three months or as you noted, within a couple of years. So Kelvin, really appreciate you taking the time to join us. Thanks for sharing your insights. No, thank you, George. Anytime.